the Major League Pickleball expansion this season was the development of the Challenger League. And that is the next 12 teams behind the premier level group, which we have seen on Tennis Channel all morning long. This is the championship round. 12 teams began. And now we are down to two. This is the promotion and relegation system, the first of its kind in American sports that we've seen on the professional level here for pro pickleball. And this is a key part of it. Every point matters for every team as the development of the 2023 season comes together. We will begin with the women's doubles matchup between Olivia McMillan and Michelle Esquivel taking on Eva Radikowska and her partner, Rachel Summers. Michelle McMahon, Cameron Irwin, Adam Stone in the booth with you. Cameron Blackwood bringing you coverage from the sideline. First server will be Rachel Summers from Naples, Florida, currently living in Miami. Former University of Mary Washington tennis player, a two-time All-American in singles. New to the Major League Pickleball circuit and has surged through the process. Eva Radikowska, her partner from Poland originally, currently living in Atlanta, Georgia. On the other side, Michelle Esquivel and Olivia McMillan, two well-known entities in the sport of pickleball. Esquivel from Southern California, living in San Diego. McMillan from Charleston, South Carolina, living in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Two strong tennis backgrounds on their side as well. First serve underway, Rachel Summers. Eva Radzikowska, even though she just misses, that has been electric throughout this challenger level. We've loved getting to see her play and what she can bring to the table. Just shy there for McMillan. Sorry, Michelle, my bad. Uh, Cameron, you're exactly right. Radikowska has been very composed and solid throughout for an inexperienced player. Uh, really good stuff from her throughout the tournament. to serve on her side. The Black Diamonds leading by one. Radikowska finding the angles. Yeah, Radikowska brings a great deal of hype to her game as well. I love that she didn't even have to take a step back to hit that overhead, uses her length to her advantage and finds a great angle. Two, two. Tie game, Rachel Summers with the serve. the middle Rachel Summers so quick with her hands yes really nice play from Summers impressed with her as well as Radikowska and this is the classic clash we've seen throughout the tournament experience for the Black Diamonds talent and inexperience for the breakers Olivia McMillan authoritative with that left hand and forehand down the middle three three Rachel Summers, as good as she is on that forehand, she also loves that backhand. Yeah, great job by Summers to be really quick and compact with that two-handed backhand. She gets it well above her shoulder and brings the ball down. this left shoulder of Summers, and she's doing a really nice job. If I'm Esquivel uh, along with McMillan, I'm gonna try and find a different area to maybe find some offense.
swing from Michelle Escovet. Yes, definitely one of the ladies in this challenger field with some of the most forehand power out there. I expect the breakers to target Olivia a little bit more as she's a little less of a threat with the offense. Escovella McMillan tying things up. Important to note too, the wind has definitely picked up just within the last 20 or so minutes. And right now it's at the back of Radzikowska and Summers. Zakowska finding the backside of Michelle Esquivel. Such a well-placed shot. Yeah, definitely probably shouldn't have gone with the two drives, Six, Olivia five. McMillan. Drive that third, drop the fifth when you get the opportunity. Two hard shots, she paid the price. from Michelle Escovel right there. You saw the shift from Radzikowska and Summers as they were prepared for the speed up, but she found just enough of the middle between them to be able to force Radzikowska to full extension. Down the line for Michelle Escovel and the Black Diamonds finding their rhythm. Absolutely great shot for Michelle Escovo there. And to your point, Cameron, that's going to be a huge issue. Michelle can go to all the spots where for offense, uh, Summers needs to slide to her right. So Radikowska clearing the middle is going to be a huge issue throughout this match. Let's see if she can do it. With that shift, it's really the middle between the two players, not necessarily the exact middle of the court. So it's trying to find the gap between them. And again, Esquivel finding it well. Radzikowska once again finding the corner on McMillan. Very precise with that forehand drive. Might be one of the most impressive players in the field given her draft slot. And what an opportunity for these challenger players to eventually bump up to the Premier League. Olivia McMillan making her case. Yeah, nice first swing and volley there from Olivia McMillan. Great preparation, nice. right amount of swing. The Bay Area Breakers, by the way, one of their team owners, Jeremy Lin, another NBA great in the ownership circle. The Pardo family, the owners of the Utah Black Diamonds. And as Cameron mentioned, wind at the back of Summers. That ball really took off. I don't think she struck it too poorly, and it still ended up two or three feet out. Going to have to monitor that and make the adjustments for the breakers with the wind at the back. She brings McMillan out wide, and that's how she's able to get this middle ball down. Great job as McMillan has to try and chase that ball back on the interior. And so the Black Diamonds, the first team to 11. We will have an end change. Anything jumping out to you strategy-wise so far in this one, Cam? You know, it's been interesting to, to watch exactly how they've gone after Summers a couple times. She did a nice job on the first few speed ups her direction on the backhand side. Uh, and like Adam mentioned, that right now they've got to figure out how to close and cover that middle with their shift in place. Radzikowska, maybe it's a step of preparation more. Maybe it's another six inches over. She's just got to be able to close out that middle and still protect the backhand side. Yeah, well said, Cameron. And yes, I, I, I've seen Michelle's been around for a long time, veteran of the 
game, and she is not terribly comfortable in extended dink rallies. She can obviously dink when she needs to, set herself up, but that is going to be the pattern as probably one of the uh, least patient players on court, and that's not because, uh, the main reason for that is because her offense is so good. Michelle Esquivel, a former college tennis player out of Concordia University in Irvine. Utah, are you in your correct positions? The Breakers trailing and by two. The Black Diamonds trying to leverage their experience in this one. Time in. And it is substantial, Time. Michelle, the experience difference between these two teams. Confusion in the middle. I believe that is Radzikowska's ball. Summers with the nice two-hander, but she's got to give way to Radzikowska in that specific situation. That ball just wide for Rachel Summers. And that's where you're gonna typically see that ball is turning back towards that line on the speed up with that two-handed backhand. It's so easy to pull that ball a little bit too wide. Phenomenal job of getting skinny for Rachel Summers, kind of turning her body to the side, getting that right shoulder out of the way and letting it go out. Well played. communication there, but also I think because now the wind is at the back of Esquivel and McMillan, that ball's gonna hang and drop a little bit more before the kitchen line for them. Yes, and like you said, Cameron, not only that, when the wind is at your back and you're attacking from a low position, extremely difficult to keep that in. Wind in your face, you can attack from a lower spot and uh, not have the ball sail out of the back of the court. right now I think the deciding factor so far as the Bay Area Breakers have created their offense in obvious positions and Utah has kind of created from some neutral positions to take uh, to take the lead in the uh, for the offense of the point so I think that's the difference with the five-point lead for the Utah Black Diamonds. Timeout is called on the floor we will take a timeout as well more women's doubles coming your way. Thank you. We 
Kirby, welcome you back to Championship Court here in Mesa, Arizona, as MLP by Margaritaville rolls on. This is Championship Court final action between the Utah Black Diamonds and the Bay Area Breakers of the Challenger League. That one just short for Olivia McMillan. Remember, Major League Pickleball expanded this season to 24 teams. 12 teams in the Premier level, 12 teams in the Challenger level, a promotion and relegation system, all being sorted out this season based on points yes, and, and we results. Saw, we saw right there the Breakers creating some offense out of nothing. We'll see if that continues for them. I mentioned that before the break, and I think they might have heard me, Summers and Radikowska. But if you're a local 5-0, even winning competitions at the 5-0 level, that's to me one of the biggest differences to get to the professional level is can you create when necessarily there aren't the most obvious opportunities to do so. Right, Cameron, and the thing is, is at the lower levels, you can win by just having your opponents make Time errors. Man. These players 13, are so 16. good, you have to put pressure on in some capacity, otherwise they're gonna eat you alive. Just Michelle Esquivel with some offense. Olivia Millen, McMillan getting in the mix with that two-handed backhand. Very, very well struck and a nice shot from her. Utah Black Diamonds, four-point lead. Radzikowska just wide on the attempt. The Utah Black Diamonds pulling away here, three points away from a game one finish. Team 13. to her tennis background and her ability 15, to carve 18. and move and really add some topspin. So now two drives from the breakers catching the Utah Black Diamonds in the transition zone, not able to come up with those volleys. 16, and the wind 18. is at their back is definitely playing a factor. She is a member of the U.S. Army Reserve and will serve once she is done with medical school. Quite busy schedule for her, pro pickleball player, also in the U.S. Army Reserve and in medical school. Just casually dominating here at the MLP Mesa event at the Challenger level. Her first appearance for Major League Pickleball. And there's so many layered stories like these in the sport of pickleball. Yeah, and actually, you know, another one right now is you've got Michelle Esquivel uh, on the same team as Rob, Rob uh, Nunnery. Cassidy. Cassidy, thank you. You right there. Thank <laughs> you for your podcast. Well, Rob, exactly. Rob Nunnery is another Rob. That is a fact. <laughs> but Rob Cassidy, but I heard Adam's voice and I said Nunnery. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but they are also, they are also at, actually now the new pros over at the Hub, a new location for pickleball in San Diego area. So if you want some coaching and uh, a chance to get out in a new area in Southern California, the Hub is a great spot. Beautiful weather there, too. Sign me up. 
Ross says, long in the Bay Area Breakers, right back in this. Adam, what were you going to say? I was going to say that I hate playing with the wind in my back. I feel like I can barely touch the ball. Wind in my face, I can release on my strokes, and we're seeing that right now from the Black Diamonds. Oh, Esquivel with a perfect touch, dropping that volley in. That was an amazing shot. So most drop volleys are with backspin on them, so they check up. But Michelle Esquivel curling that with some topspin. Beautiful angle from her. Radzikowska loading up on the backhand, denying Esquivel any leverage. Tie game. Rachel Summers with a lethal two-handed backhand. That's her favorite shot. Just great rhythm right there from Summers. You gotta love that two-handed backhand into the wind. She finds the middle. That ball's dipping down. 2019. Eva, this is your first time here at MLP, and now in the championships here. What was the strategy heading in against such a veteran team? Uh, you know, the strategy was to stay aggressive as, as much as we can, um, to stay positive, and just to have as much fun as possible. <laughs> You guys were, you were a little bit behind trying to catch up. You started to get ahead, but what was that change there in the strategy that got you this win? Um, just playing our game, being more aggressive. I think at the beginning we were a little tight, a little nervous. So I said, let's just play our game, Eva. Let's have fun. You got it done. There you have it, Barricade Breakers go up one to zero. You guys don't want to go to rear. We'll be right back with men's doubles.
Championship Court as we welcome you to the Men's Doubles Championship for the challenger level between the Utah Diamonds and the Bay Area Breakers. We just saw the Bay Area Breakers with a huge comeback special win against the experienced Michelle Esquivel and Olivia McMillan. Rachel Summers and Eva Radzikowska introducing themselves to the Major League Pickleball stage. And up next, it is the men's doubles matchup between the Bay Area Breakers, Pablo Tellez and Christian Alsha, taking on Spencer Smith and Rob Cassidy. So, we'll turn to you, Adam Stone, in the booth, strategy-wise. You know these players, you know the players on the far end quite well. What do you see them doing strategy-wise? So I think that Spencer Smith and Rob Cassidy are at their best when they're playing solid and counter-attacking, and Bay Area Breakers are at their best when they're firing away. This is a perfect uh, kind of yin and yang matchup, as we see right here, to start off. <laughs> you were not wrong. Yes, I, I mean, Rob Cassidy, <laughs> electric hand speed, great counter-attacks, doesn't necessarily create offense as well as some other players, but he is a phenomenal counter attacker these teams were almost identical in their point differential percentage in the standings we would expect a close matchup to follow here on championship court An easy ATP for Spencer Smith. I don't know about easy, but he made it look easy. No, I think it qualified in the easy category. If okay. there is such a thing as an easy ATP, that for was these it, pros, Michelle. It was. <laughs> for the purposes of our of our broadcast today. Oh, Christian Allshot. Yeah, and you can see just the athleticism from Allshot. He was a fantastic tennis player at the University of Chicago, and he has great length and uses it to his advantage. Oh, he goes for the line there, Alshon does. Yeah, just got a little over eager in terms of anticipating what he thought might take place. And of course, Rob Cassidy goes with something else. So trying to come back from that. Black the diamonds. Flat footed. Off to a uh, racing start. Sorry, Cameron. And the Bay Area Breakers cut the lead in half. Pablo Tellez back to serve from Colombia, living in Naples, Florida. What a rip from Christian Alshon. Yeah, and uh, all these Tennis Channel viewers, I'll tell you what, Christian Alshon, not only All-American University of Chicago, one year at the University of Virginia, and number one in singles and doubles and men's 18s coming out of high school. I think Spencer Smith should probably have taken that ball. Rob Cassidy deferring to him, always a bit of an issue with that lefty-righty combo, two forehands in the middle. What a finish. Pablo Tellez set up nicely for Malsha. Yeah. Yes, uh, and just, just a non-committal is what that was from Spencer Smith. Uh, he kind of got stuck in the middle, decided to go with a power shot instead of soft, and he paid the price. Tough miss for the Black Diamonds. Tellez will take back the serve. Third shots, definitely one of those those uh, soft touch feel uh, shots that come a little later in your career. Alshon not been playing long. He's got the power, but he's got to find a way to clean up the soft stuff. Just wide for Rob Cassidy was the call. Yeah, but how about that save from Alshon? My goodness, this entire fan base just gave a massive whoa in the middle of that rally. Just one heck of a snag. A couple of unforced errors. And now the Bay Area Breakers carving out a nice lead on their side. We're going to go up two to nothing in this matchup. Wow, 
it's been all breakers these last couple minutes. I believe the Utah Black Diamonds up 4-1. They are on an 8-1 run for the breakers. Very nice job and a smart timeout from the Utah Black Diamonds. Timeout called on the floor. Bay Area Breakers up by four. What has caused that separation, Adam Stone, in terms of how Tellez and Alshon have been able to pull away? Well, obviously, it's some nice shot making from then, so a great get from Alshon, but I think a little tightness uh, from the Utah Black Diamonds has been the biggest uh, decider of that 8-1 run. So uh, they're going to have to clean it up, Smith and Rob Cassidy, as I mentioned. Veterans of the game been around for a while. I have no doubt that they're going to find their footing in this match and uh, even this thing up or make it tighter. And speaking of footing, I think one of the things that's been really impressive is just the movement of Alshon and Tejas. Because Tejas has the ability with that left hand to cover so much of that middle, it allows Alshon to release and go heavily around that corner. There's just a ton of motion and movement going on that makes you think one extra second. Alshon, the former captain of his tennis team at the University of Chicago, as you guys mentioned, won an NCAA title there. Oh, I see we have some water on the court. That's what the issue is. Michelle Esquivel over there with the towel. Somebody must have spilled. Strategic play? Or <laughs> yeah, maybe not. so. Next level thinking right there. <laughs> uh, accidentally dropping your water bottle. <laughs> Quote, when, unquote, accident. Exactly. When the team's on an 8-1 run. Pretty funny. So if you're Rob Cassidy and Spencer Smith, what would you be talking about strategy-wise against these guys? It, I don't think that they can get to strategy talk until they clean up themselves yeah. with some of those soft errors. So I think that they're just going with a positive, uh, uh, you know, just kind of pumping each other up, getting themselves in a good place to make some balls, get some rhythm, and then they can start talking about where to put the ball and where to attack after they establish that base of consistency. So back to basics, what you're saying. Correct. In summary, Christian Alshon. Back to serve. Another miss for Smith. There's another basic. Adam Stone. They know it. Yeah, you can see it on their faces. Tejas gives them a break, so Rob Cassidy takes over. Six. Six times. Another miss on the third shot drop for Rob Cassidy. So the Bay Area Breakers, the first team to 11. Yes, and I wanted to mention that really the main difference between Premier and Challenger at this point, uh, Michelle and Cameron, is they all have the shots. They all have the explosive athleticism. It's the consistency and the ability to repeat the mechanics of the Premiership level. And uh, we're going to have to get Smith and Rob Cassidy to clean it up. Yeah, without a doubt. And this is one of the other interesting elements, too, at this change of end. We've been talking about the wind so much, but now all of a sudden the wind's going to be at their back. So they were trying to push. They were making, having a lot of misses into the net right there. So all of a sudden this ball is going to fly. They already feel like they're going to press and push those thirds. And now that ball and the wind is going to give them a little extra lift. So maybe it's either perfect and hopefully yeah. they don't hopefully hopefully they're over Hopefully they're over a yes. is my concern. Exactly. <laughs> Christian Alshot looking to widen his lead. Back to serve to Smith. What, what happened there? Was that a, was that a double hit? Who actually, who actually hit that ball? I couldn't tell. No, that, it was definitely hit by Teas and then didn't make it, so it got a little extra help from Alshon. Bob <laughs> Cassidy's so scrappy. Oh, tough point to drop if you're Rob Cassidy, but yeah. you love it when yeah, Rob I'm Cassidy mad. ends up on the floor or some way, somehow. There will be skin, there will be blood, there will be hair on the court when Rob Cassidy is done. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Already in 
some uh, better rhythm are Cassidy and Smith. It's pretty clear since the side change. Oh, that ball lands in, and Dea's ball lands out. That was looking like it was going to sail out of bounds, the lob from Spencer Smith. Swirling wind conditions. cleaning up those thirds remarkably well, especially on the side of Rob Cassidy. You switch ends and all of a sudden things are starting to fall their direction. Alshon with the half Ernie. Well, nice play from Christian Alshon. Great athleticism. And you see as Rob Cassidy often in that defensive position will go down to one knee. Uh, he was in a pretty good spot to make that, but just too much power from Christian. The tweener, his favorite shot. We see it again there. He's the self-proclaimed tweener king. And I can't really argue with him at this point. Uh, he does it <laughs> several times a match, and he's had some pretty good success with those tweeners. The Bay Area is stealing back momentum. Just, again, Smith with the tough error. Yeah, Alshon, he's a showman out there, I'll tell you that much. He's very confident in his abilities, and he's got a lot of tools at his disposal. And another error mounting, so back-to-back -back for Smith right here. Another tweener for Alshon, and a... Chest bump motion towards Rob Cassidy. I think that was a come at me. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> they, they definitely made right. some awkward eye contact there. There's no question. Definitely not a chest bump. It was a come at me, bro. Moment <laughs> from Christian Alshon. New to the scene of Major League Pickleball. Making a name for himself here. Not that time. I think you might have. Should have done a tweener on that one right there as it <laughs> caught, him on the, caught him on the right hip. What is he thinking going for a traditional shot? Come on. <laughs> Oh, Rob Cassidy's bleeding. I don't believe it. This has never happened before. I am completely joking everyone at home. He has a little kit that he keeps in his bag so that he can <laughs> patch himself up when he scrapes his knees, which is inevitable pretty much every tournament. He's literally going straight forward in his bag, too. Oh, Very yeah. well prepared. He knows himself. Yeah, I played with him. I played against him. I've seen it all. Here we go. He's got the, look, look at this man. So prepared. Look, he has a <laughs> band that goes around his knee to cover that up. It's not even your traditional <laughs> bandage. <laughs> First aid kit handy. We call that max effort, ladies and gentlemen, leaving nothing to chance. He's going to go for every ball, always has, always will. <laughs> well, he's got skin. In, he's got skin on the court. He's wiping up. I'm pretty certain that's correct. It's that unbelievable. Is, what is, is that a biohazard? <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the grossest things I've seen on live TV. <laughs> Clean up patrol on championship court, and we have blood on the court. Yeah, I can hear head referee Courtney Johnson mouthing that to Brooks Wiley, MLP commissioner, that there's blood on the court and they've got to do something about it. Rob Cassidy, blood, sweat, and tears out here for Major League Pickleball. And don't forget, this is the Challenger Championship, Challenger League Championship, and we have still to come on Tennis Channel, the Premier Level Championship. And boy, is that going to be a fun match to watch. Yeah, we can't wait to see what. It's the Hustlers and the Mad Drops. I'm curious to know whether uh, the Hustlers are going to be able to take a game off the Mad Drops and finally even get to that second mixed right. doubles. I think they're going to challenge the Mad Drops to their first loss of the tournament, game-wise. I'm not sure about full, full team-wise. I think the Hustlers, if anyone can pull it off, it's, it's the Hustlers. The hustlers. <laughs> They've been surprising us all tournament long. Not surprising themselves, though. 
The word of the day is definitely spicy. We've seen some really good, not only spicy play on the court, but spicy demeanor from the players getting really fired up and just letting their opponents know that they are ready to rock. They're not going anywhere, and they can take that mental warfare. Cleanup crew established on championship court. No blood to be found here. Rob Cassidy back to serve. He is bandaged up and ready to rock. Trying to force a five-point comeback here on his side. Spencer Smith falling short on that backhand side once again. And yeah. I, I really consider Spencer one of the more consistent players, kind of a rock, uh, and he has definitely had a few uncharacteristic errors throughout this match. takes place you just got to start building off things so that's great for Spencer Smith right there to find an attack finding the line beautifully done you got to start telling yourself things are going to start turning Exactly what you said, Cameron. Sometimes you're 0 for 8 in the field and, and NBA game, you make a couple free throws and then you get your rhythm. I think it's a real similar situation for Spencer Smith. Maybe a couple good offensive shots. He can clean up his soft stuff as well. Rob Cassidy. Yeah, nice shot right there from Rob Cassidy. You can see he kind of chokes up on the paddle, so he actually takes some of the length away that he could have, but he uses that still to his fullest extent. It comes with different nuances, right? Great control on the paddle. Feels like he can get those soft defensive touches, but a great job in that regard attacking. Timeout called on the floor. Rob Cassidy hyping up the crowd, trying to pull a comeback here on championship court. Positions. Okay, Hera, you're in your correct position. Thank you. Spencer Smith up to serve for the Black Diamonds, trailing by three, but have all the momentum on their side right now. Christian Ausha closing the door on any hope for that run. Yeah, and you definitely see that, not too often, but occasionally where you hit the initial earning, you hang out on the side of the court and just slap another one. Nice job by Christian. <laughs> nice job by Spencer Smith right there. I do have to say, though, Alshon had his paddle there. He was well prepared, just hitting the wrong spot off the edge. Some hesitation down the middle. Spencer Smith coming to life. Oh, is it the jugular? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the graphic ouch yeah. right behind Tejas. <laughs> That hey, he took it like a champ, though, didn't he? He did. <laughs> With a smile on his face. <laughs> and Spencer's. 
Smith finds the opening. And what do we have here? A one point game for men's doubles. Challenge of having both forehands in the middle. You never know which one's going to take it. Alshon seems to have been the alpha to this point and a little bit hesitant down the stretch. Not that time. No hesitation on whose forehand that was. Pablo <laughs> Definitely true. And to your point earlier, Michelle, you're exactly right. And what I've found that really helps a lot of my students that I teach is to have a designated caller when you have two forehands in the middle. Instead of each of you occasionally calling the ball, a designated caller can help that situation. <laughs> That's how Pablo <laughs> coming all the way across the court, sealing the victory for the Bay Area Breakers. And so they go up two to nothing in the match series against the Utah Black Diamonds. They tried to neutralize Tejas, but great finish right here as he comes across. Just absolutely outstanding play by the Bay Area yeah, Breakers. Comes down to the mixed doubles. We'll see what happens after this. Pablo, close match there at the end, but you guys went on a 9-1 run. What was working for you? I think we were just keeping it simple, uh, playing no risk, but aggressive at the same time. You like to get fired up out there. What is it about this MLP atmosphere that just gets you going? You guys are now up 2-0. to zero. Uh, I played college tennis last year, and it's so similar. The heckling, the energy, it's, it's electric, it's fun, and I want to keep playing. <laughs> Yeah. There you guys have it. They go up two to zero. We're going to come right back with mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere.
We are back on championship court, the Bay Area Breakers, with a two to nothing edge on the Utah Black Diamonds. And so, Bay Area could close things out in three with this first mixed doubles matchup. They put out Rachel Summers and Christian Allshot to try and seal the deal against Rob Cassidy and his partner, Olivia McMillan. You both like the look of Rachel Summers and Christian Alshon. Why, Adam? Well, just just a little more dynamic between the two in terms of offense and, uh, uh, you know, so some of that ability to create things out of nothing. So really what it's going to come down to is Summers and Alshon, are they going to be able to hit through the defensive prowess and counterattack prowess of Olivia McMillan and Rob Cassidy? Uh, I have no idea, but I think that there's a very good chance, given their skill sets, that they'll be able to do so. Well, and this is going to have a little bit of a different look. Obviously, once you get into mix, things start to shift and change. And one of the big changes for Alshon, he doesn't have a lefty to his right. He has to protect more of that middle. He's not going to be able to work around the corner as often. He'll find a way to work around the corner. You know, you know he's going to try to do something he's spectacular out there. Without a doubt. right away. He kind of reminds me of myself out there. Oh, you know, does he? Just explosive athlete and mover, you know, really, <laughs> really long limbs out there, you know, just like me, carbon coffee. So dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> Great shot right there from Olivia McMillan. And if you're a female playing against a guy in that cross court right there, that's gonna be so fun to find a little dink winner. Cassidy into the net that time. Yeah, definitely true, Cam. Nothing gets the crowd energized than the girl burning the guy. Everybody <laughs> loves that situation. There's no doubt about it. Seen that story a couple of times here on championship court. Down the middle for Rob Cassidy and least, Olivia McMillan. At least Alshon didn't take it in the chest like uh, Julian Arnold did in that, <laughs> in that previous match. So. <laughs> Jesse Irvin, the winner of that battle against Julian Arnold. Great Arnold. drop from Rob Cassidy there, forcing Alshon to overextend and put it into the net. Really nice feathery touch from Rob. Utah Diamonds fighting to stay alive in this one. That ball out of bounds. It is a winner go home situation obviously here in the championship round vying for the championship prize oh he got lucky with that one because he actually tossed that up to the forehand of olivia mcmillan yeah i think in six months he won't be trying that shot work that time Sean, aggressive on the Ernie. Thought he'd go for it. Just misses that one. Black Diamond's back on top. I told you he'd find a way. Yeah, he, he did. <laughs> You're right out of, per usual. <laughs> Rachel Summers into the net. Despite loving that backhand, didn't work out that time. A big lefty forehand from Rob Cassidy moves to the middle really well to cover, uh, especially in mixed doubles. Great defense right there from Olivia McMillan, resetting cross court, getting Alsh on a ball that he thought was attackable, but that one didn't end up above the height of the net. Sailing long, the Bay Area Breakers climbing back in. Yeah, that's a tough one for Rob Cassidy there. As I mentioned, Five, not six. the best initiator of offense, but you kind of need to in a mixed double situation. We'll see if he can find that right balance. 
That ball called wide on Olivia McMillan. McMillan looking for confirmation. Potential challenge. <laughs> the call on the court is out, and Rob Cassidy declares that he's going to challenge. Rather emphatically, too. Yeah, you know what? I want to challenge that one. That's what he says down on the court. Let's see if we can take a look. Utah Diamonds are challenging the out call made by Bay Area Breakers. Scored as a rally of 6 6. Yeah, and just like a challenge in an NFL game, the call on the court means quite a bit. So it's not just a, a necessarily an in or out situation. You have to have enough video proof and video evidence to overturn the call. So um, I, um, if we can get another look, that would be great. I'm not sure if we can, but I do think I saw a little bit of green in between the ball and the line. We'll just have to see. And I think they're starting to hold the replays until the officials have been uh, had the ability to look at the replay on their own. Here's a look. Oh yeah. So they have made the decision. Yeah, exactly right, Cam. And that happened earlier where someone wanted to challenge, saw it on the jumbo and then wanted to pull back. Ball stands. That's obviously uh, a situation that's okay. Challenge. Well, he's in play at six six. But you saw it on screen. That ball out of bounds. So Rachel Summers will take it back Time in. on the honest call. Tie game. for the next one. That was much more compact, nice extension there, quick flick to the ceiling and the overhead. Nice job by Rob Cassidy. Yeah, that's Rob Cassidy at his finest. Like I said, great counterattacker and great when his partner attacks for him to be there ready for the next ball. Nice job, Rob. too much. No. Uh, reasonable try from Olivia McMillan. Sailed it long, though, but I wonder if uh, one of the ladies might amp up their aggression as we move towards the latter stages of this match. Ron Cassidy with an easy put-away chance off of a pop-up from Alsha.
back on championship court, Christian Alshon and kicking back with Sir and the Barrier Breakers were the first team to 11 on the end change. Utah Black Diamonds need this win to stay alive in this series. McMillan and Cassidy trying to afford to come back. I think that was a little bit of an early take right there from Alshon, just low enough. Tried to surprise him, but a little risky for me. Nice shot from Olivia McMillan taking that big lefty forehand right at the chest of Christian Alshon catching him off guard, not able to convert the block. Mixed doubles at its finest. Olivia McMillan weathering the storm of the offense from the opposing man, and then Rob Cassidy getting in there and finishing things. So this is speculation on the court. The referee is saying that a call was made, an out call was made, and everyone on the court is saying, I don't think so. And so resolution found the Bay Area Breakers. Yeah, that was pretty awkward. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what happened. <laughs> She expected that ball to be taken on her right hip. So just getting a little caught in between her body. <laughs> what did that go off of? It looked like it went off of the thigh of Rob Cassidy and over the net. So the barrier breaker is back on top by one. so quick with his reflexes. Yeah, and you also have to know, too, the way Rob Cassidy is able to drop his body down regardless of when he's playing defense, it's going to be hard to headhunt against him because his body is already going to be below the height of the net. What a shot for Rob Cassidy keeping this game close. And Alshon's tossing up his hands because he's going, what am I doing here? I just flicked that right to her forehand as the lefty. Interesting. I haven't really seen Olivia McMillan too interested in even dinking with Rachel Summers. Uh, obviously, her stroke is more naturally cross court, but she's playing a lot of balls to Christian Alshon. Uh, you don't see that too frequently in the mixed doubles game. Alshon found the baseline there. High ball in the middle, let go by McMillan and Cassidy. Bay Area Breakers stealing the lead once again. 15-14. from McMillan right there, especially in some windy conditions. Make sure you follow that ball all the way to the line. Be prepared. Hellshot was airborne. That was a one of the more athletic plays we've seen. Like a 40-inch vertical right there from Alshon. Looking like he's testing his vert. Once again, that looks just like me out there. <laughs> my exact thought. How tall are you again, Adam? I am 5'8", and my vertical is about that. <laughs> so, yeah, 
<laughs> so I got about a, almost a foot of uh, natural vertical leap. So uh, just, that was a ridiculous jump from Christian Alshon, such an explosive athlete. For those that haven't had the pleasure of viewing your athletic display, we had to give them <laughs> context. A pretty extreme amount of miscommunication. Maybe a slight pump fake. We talk about that sometimes, especially in mixed doubles, where Olivia is thinking Rob is going to step over or maybe even makes a jab stuff, realizes he can't get there, and kind of leaves her uh, hung out to dry. And a crucial point in the match as well. Yeah, I think that's uh, a very large understatement. Uh, <laughs> talked about the wind a little bit, but I mean, we're at crunch time in the finals of the Challenger League. You just can't have a loose error like that. Timeout called on the floor. This one seemingly slipping away from the Utah Black Diamonds as they look to climb back in. But Alshon and Summers, despite going down a couple of times in this one, have found their rhythm and regained the momentum. How are they able to do it? What was working as a part of their game to get back on top? Well, I think, uh, number one, a 40-inch vertical leap is, is a pretty <laughs> good place to start. And An Adam Stone-esque Yes, that's right. And with this two-point lead. lead here, I think instead we've seen it a couple times today and throughout the weekend where you get to that 20 point, 19 point, whatever the case may be, two or three point lead, and you kind of take, uh, play it safe, kind of tighten up a little bit. I would really like to see the breakers go for a few shots, play some offensive style points, especially with a little bit of wind in their face. I think they have some margin for error. The Bay Area Breakers just a couple of points away from clinching the Challenger League Championship here in Mesa, Arizona. Two points out. Al shot with the serve. in his mentality throughout that rally. Overhead after overhead, you start to add more and more pressure, but he stayed steady, continued to find new angles. 2018. Game point, match point for the Breakers. Yes. 
That's amazing play from the breakers. And I'll tell you right now, unproven talent sometimes falls on its face and sometimes rises to the occasion. This was a great coming out party for a lot of these players. And I'm very impressed with everyone on the Bay Area breakers. Congratulations and well done. Yeah, definitely some unknowns coming into this Mesa event for the Bay Area breakers. But so impressed. Eva Radzikowski was just incredible from start to finish of this tournament. I loved what I saw from Pablo Teas, too. People had to try and stay away from him because he was so deadly. Christian Alshon stepped up to the challenge as well. And then Rachel Summers floored me. Not only was she great on that right side, forehand rolling dings, but she was also phenomenal, whether she was at the baseline, she had the pace and power, as well as the soft stuff. We will check in with the winners after the break, but what a run it was for the Bay Area Breakers. We will have the championship ceremony after this short break with our Cameron Blackwood. Don't go anywhere. We got to hear just how the Bay Area Breakers got it done. for both teams here in the challenger level.
We want to thank you guys so much for being here. We know it's been a chilly weekend, but thank you to the audience for sticking around. We really appreciate you guys. We would like to thank our sponsors, Margaritaville, Michelob Ultra, Circle, Skechers, HSS, Aura Organic, Knock Around Sunglasses, Pro XR Performance, Frometh Pickleball, Pickleball United, and Grillos Pickles. And none of this would be possible without these individuals right next to me that I'm going to introduce. MLP founder, Steve Kuhn. MLP interim CEO, Brian Levine. MLP strategic advisor and board member, Ann Wooster. MLP commissioner, Brooks Wiley. And CMO of Margaritaville, Tamara Bedenza Decker. Yeah. Now we're going to speak to MLP founder, Mr. Steve Kuhn. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, this atmosphere has been amazing. Let me start with the fans. You guys have been great all weekend. All four days you guys have been here, you've been loud. Uh, I want to thank our hosts, uh, Bell Bank Park. Wow, what, what an amazing facility this is. The Talking Stick Resort Championship Court. This is awesome. It's been packed, it's been loud, it's been crazy. So thank you all. Thank all the members of MLP and Duper staff. They've been awesome. And uh, last but certainly not least, thanks to these amazing players. They, uh, they are leaving it all on the court. In the case of Mr. Cassidy, literally leaving it on the court. Uh, thank you uh, for all the effort you, you put on, not only here, but all the effort you put on day in and day out to be the championship level players that you are. Thank you, Steve. And now I'd like to introduce our runner-ups, the Utah Black Diamonds. Come on over here, guys. <laughs> Rob, first time in your championship here, but just how amazing was this weekend? Didn't come out on top, but runner-ups well-deserved. Uh, you know, it was an amazing weekend through and through. It's good to be around such a great audience and supporters of Pickleball. Uh, and I was just so happy to be, really just be part of such an amazing team, Spencer, Michelle, and Olivia. I mean, we just took care of business all weekend. There were matches when our girls won it for us, and I couldn't be prouder of our team this weekend. Thank you, Rob. One more time, guys, for the Utah Black Diamonds. And now, your winners. The Bay Area Breakers! <laughs> Tomorrow, let's get that trophy in their hand. <laughs> like we said here, Christian, there's only one veteran with Pablo on this team. Pretty new, but you guys made it work. How amazing was this weekend? It was a lot of fun. My first major league pickleball, and you know that it's just it's a lot of fun. It really is. I mean, not much more to say. But Pablo, being the veteran on this team, just how much, how proud are you of these guys for battling it out and coming out on top? Oh, so proud. Like I have no words to say how everyone just stepped up every single matchup. So. Well, congratulations to you guys. Right now, we would like to announce our MVP of the challenger level, and that is going to go to Miss Eva Redzowski. <laughs> You've been such a pleasure here at MLP. I've enjoyed watching you, talking to you, all the above. Just how special has it been here at MLP this weekend? I, I can't even describe it. You know, first MLP, I got so lucky. You know, the best team owners, the best coach, the best teammates. You guys watching us, it's, it's I mean, it's been like a dream and it's going to be tough to beat. <laughs> There you guys have it, the Bay Area Breakers take the Challenger Level Championships. Thank you again to all our sponsors, the audience. Back up to you, Cameron. All right, well, there are your victors of the Challenger Level. The Bay Area Breakers are holding it the Pritchard Cup. Make sure to join us coming up at 6 Eastern. It's going to be time for the Premier Level Championships. It's the New York Hustlers versus the LA Mad Drops. Again, a huge congratulations to Christian Alshon, Rachel Summers, Pablo Teas, and Eva Radzikowska. Thanks for joining us here on Tennis Channel. We'll see you back in just a few.